Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'd like to help you decide whether it's better to use a longer HDMI cable or an active HDMI extender if you need to increase the distance between your media device and your display device. Because both of these options have advantages and disadvantages, but it's really important to understand when you choose one over the other. And before I get into all those details, I thought I'd start off with a really basic understanding of how an HDMI signal is generated and how it moves through the HDMI cable between your media device and your display. So at a very basic level, an HDMI signal is a digital signal, it's also an electrical signal, that contains audio and video information. And it's generated by the media device. And that information is sent through the HDMI cable to the receiver, which is a display device in this case. Now, HDMI has really matured in recent years and includes a lot of other advanced functionality like HDCP for copy protection, CEC for controlling multiple devices, uh, ARC, which is an audio standard, audio return channel standard that actually moves audio through there and can accommodate some of the more modern sound bars and home stereo systems. So it's really important to understand that once that signal is generated, it has a certain amount of energy and if you have a really long cable, you're going to get signal loss in that cable. So the longer you make the cable, the weaker that signal is coming out the other end of that cable. Now, it really depends on the resolution of the media content you're going to push through that cable. So if you've got a lower resolution signal, like 720p or 1080p, you can probably extend that HDMI cable maybe up to 50 feet. And that's what this is right here. This is a 50-foot cable that's heavy duty and, and really ready to go for a 50-foot extension. The challenge is, as you start transmitting higher resolution content, 4K and 8K, they require much more bandwidth, which means there's gonna be more signal loss in that length of cable. So when you move to a 4K signal, you can't really extend to 25 feet or 50 feet anymore. You're kind of limited at the most, maybe three meters, maybe five meters at the outside, but you're really pushing the length of the cable if you go over the five meters. So you'll typically see HD cables, HDMI HD cables for 4K that are shorter, typically a meter or three meters at most. So if you're gonna be using 4K content or 8K content, all of a sudden you can't use cables anymore. Now, there are two types of cables on the market. I probably should explain that. There's passive cables, which I have here, which are nothing more than high quality connections between point A and point B. Lately, there's been a grouping of active cables developed that actually enhances that signal. So there are amplifiers in the transmitter side and in the receiver side that boost up the signal and allow you to extend it a little bit further along. The challenge with that though is a lot of the media devices aren't compatible with that yet or the display devices aren't compatible either. Plus those cables tend to be very expensive. Now an active HDMI extender like I have over here solves that problem because essentially you've got a transmitter and a receiver and the transmitter will take the HDMI signal, convert it to a different type of transport. Typically, it'll be a LAN cable between the transmitter and receiver, and it can boost up that signal, send it across that LAN connection. When it arrives at the receiver, it'll actually decode that and turn it back into an HDMI signal. In, in all cases, it's gonna also include the HDMI audio and video, the CEC control, it's gonna have the ARC in there, it's gonna have uh, the HDCP in there. So everything you would put in the one end will transfer across that LAN cable to the receiver and be converted back into a standard HDMI connection. So these work really, really well. And I have two versions here. This is a wired version that uses a standard twisted pair LAN cable. There's also a wireless version right here where you simply plug the transmitter into the device, you plug the receiver into the display. Now the pros and cons of both of these, if I'm looking at the cables, they tend to be simpler to use. They tend to be less expensive for the most case unless you start getting into really long runs with really heavy duty cables, but they have limited functionality. They'll transfer the HDMI connection between the primary site and the secondary site, but a lot of the other advanced functionality can't really be handled by these cables. Things like remote control. So for example, if you've got a primary location where the media device is located and a secondary location, an upstairs bedroom somewhere where you're watching a TV, you're gonna to wanna to control the content from that media device from the bedroom. You can't do that through an HDMI cable. When you move to an active HDMI extender like this, these typically include what are called infrared blaster kits or infrared extender kits where at that remote location, there's a receiver module that will pick up the remote control signals from that location and send those back over whatever transport medium, whether it's wireless or a LAN, to the primary site where they're rebroadcast and you can actually control the content. So that's one advantage over here. Another advantage for a lot of the HDMI extension kits is they provide audio extraction capabilities, which means as you're transporting out audio to the secondary site, 
the receiver can actually strip that audio component from the HDMI media stream and allow you to pass that along through an analog or digital connection or even an HDMI arc connection to a home stereo or a soundbar for better quality audio. You can't really do that here. You're going to be completely dependent on what type of display device you have at that secondary location. Another big advantage to these is that they're incredibly simple to use. You basically will run a cable between these two. It's a standard LAN cable, typically a CAT6, CAT7, uh, between those two locations. And most homes have those already pre-wired in the house. But even if you had to run that, that cable is fairly inexpensive. Two connections, and you're up and running. The wireless one is even easier because you don't need to run cables. You'll plug this into the transmitter side where the media gear is. You'll plug this into your receiver at the uh, TV side, and the signal will transmit between the two, and you're up and running. The difference between these two is that you can push a higher resolution over a wired connection than you can over a wireless connection. The other difference between the two choices is that a wired connection will run a longer distance than a wireless connection. The wireless connection tends to have issues with walls and obstructions and things in your home, whereas a wired connection, there's no issues whatsoever. You can extend the wired connection typically 100 meters, 200 meters away. So you could have the media center downstairs in the basement and a bedroom way on the other side of the house upstairs, run a wire between them and use that HDMI extender kit. So the choice really comes down between these two to the resolution of the media content you want to transfer, your budget, and really how far away from that primary location will that secondary location be. If you're setting up a media center where you've got a receiver here and a monitor on the wall, use an HDMI cable because it's a short run. You're going to be able to do that at the highest resolution possible without an issue. But if you're trying to extend it between two bedrooms or maybe the basement and upstairs bedroom, you'll definitely need to use an HDMI extender. And these have come down in price and they've gotten a lot more sophisticated. So the budget kind of goes away when you're starting to put these kind of plans together. It really comes down more to the resolution of the content you're going to transmit and the distance you have to transmit it. So that's pretty much all I had today. I hope you've enjoyed this. And until next time, thanks for watching.